While you're learning SSIS or you're doing some testing, one of the cool things that you can do is you can time a container, you can time a task, and that can kind of give you an idea, hey, this is faster than that, or this is roughly about how long X takes for Y number of rows. I do this pretty frequently whenever I'm working on a new project. If I have to figure out how long does it take me to load up 1 million rows, I can then probably extrapolate some basis of, okay, if I need to load up 20 million rows, then it's probably roughly 20 times what it costs to load up 1 million rows. Probably a fair assessment. So I want to show you in this video how to add a stopwatch, how to add a timer to your packages. Very easy. Need to know a little bit about the .NET framework, but it's pretty simple. So let's give us our package here create a project. Now I'm going to just focus on actually doing the timer. I'm not going to focus on doing other bits like downloading or uploading or importing or exporting. So we'll grab a script that says start the timer. Then we're going to grab a do important stuff here task and then report how long it took. And so what we'll do is we'll just have them go like that. Let's make it look pretty and bring them right there. Okay, so you kind of get the idea. It's pretty basic. Let's start a stopwatch, do whatever our task would be, and then report on it, right? Pretty simple. Here we go. Um, first thing that we need is we need a variable. What you need to be able to do is pass data between tasks. So let's create us a package level variable. And I'm going to call this my stopwatch. And I actually want this to store an instance of the .NET stopwatch class. So you can actually store an instance, an object, in an SSIS variable. You just have to make it of a type object. Okay, so let's come back now and let's use our start timer. Um, I don't know which one we'll use first. We'll use C sharp. I'm going to go ahead and bring this in in our variables collection here. And I want it to be locked for the duration of this particular script task. So I'm going to set it up here. And I'm going to go to the script and I need to instantiate a copy of the script, uh, of the stopwatch. So I get rid of all this junk. It doesn't really matter here. And so here's what we have. Now, what you need to know about is the stopwatch class. So um, let's just say uh, equals new. And this is in the diagnostics namespace. And it's called the stopwatch. Okay, so the stopwatch class is going to allow us to start a stopwatch. Later on, we'll stop the stopwatch, and my favorite property is elapsed milliseconds. So it will tell you how many milliseconds elapsed. So basically, it, you start it, you go do all your work, you stop it, and it reports back how long it took. Very cool. Very awesome. So once I've created, once I've instantiated the stopwatch, I need to start it. So that's all you do is you just say start, uh, and you can see uh, that we could stop it as well. Okay, so that's it. And then we'd say like elapsed milliseconds, and that tells us how long it actually took. So like, um, I'll show you this just real quick. Uh, by the way, for those of you that are in VB, this is all the same stuff except for you'd say dim stopwatch as new system.diagnostics.stopwatch. The same exact everything else. So um, except, of course, the semicolon there. Uh, so uh, let's do this. Um, uh, let's go to sleep. Um, threading dot thread dot sleep, and we'll sleep for one second, and then we'll stop our stopwatch. Do not do this. Is not for production stuff, man. This is just all like play in your development, so you can learn SSIS and work in here a little better. And now let's just report back how long it actually 
took to run. Stopwatch dot elapsed milliseconds. Okay. So there's our C sharp version. And just for Let's just call that there. I'm going to show you how to do a VB version real quick. So again, we'll bring in our stopwatch. And not much to it down here. We're just going to say dim stopwatch uh, as new um, uh, equals, sorry, new. Um, what did I do wrong here? Dim stopwatch. As a new system dot diagnostics dot stopwatch and go clean up here equal new systems. So well, what is the is that up there? But I see the problem. What did I, I <laughs> I'm doing C sharp. I could not figure it out. I was like, what is going on? And then I realized I did a foolish thing. I didn't change that to VB. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. Talking and typing. VB. There we go. I mean, I was just flummoxed. Why is, am I doing it wrong? What is, what is new style URI parser? Uh, okay, so, dim. There you go, stopwatch as new system dot diagnostics dot stopwatch. And, you know, it's the same thing, stopwatch dot start. Uh, then we'd say system dot threading dot thread dot sleep. And stopwatch, right? I mean, they're not difficult, okay? I just don't want you to feel left out if you're a VB person, okay? Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and pa and just disable that one. We'll just run it through with uh, C Sharp as the first one here. Okay. Now, so let's just go ahead and execute this one task. And it should wait for one second and report back that 1,000 milliseconds elapsed. And you can see that the precision is not perfect. You know, 9999 is pretty close to 1,000. Maybe if we run it again, it'll say 1,001. Uh, maybe it'll say 1,99999. Okay, but it's the same. It's close enough, right? So here's what you need to do. You need to go over here to your script, and I'm in the C-sharp side of things here, and you need to now store. We need to take this part out here. So I'm going to comment that out. Now that you've started your stopwatch, you need to put the stopwatch into your variable. So this is where you say dts.variables and you say stopwatch dot value equals stopwatch. Now I actually realize I need to bring that into the right version. I think I put stopwatch only in the read collection. So because I'm assigning it, it needs to go into the right collection. So that's what we're doing. We're storing the variable, we're storing the object stopwatch in the stopwatch SSIS variable. So I'm going to move that down here. So it has started the stopwatch. We've now stored that stopwatch reference inside of our SSIS variable. Now my important stuff is nothing more than making it go to sleep. Uh, so I'm just going to say system.threading.currentthread.sleep. We'll sleep for 1,000 again. Again, you wouldn't do these types of things in production, just to make sure you understand. And now I want to stop my stopwatch and report it. So I come down here, I'll, I happen to use this this time, uh, so we'll grab our stopwatch. And what I have to do to use this now, I have to cast the variable as a stopwatch class. So var stopwatch uh, equals and I just say system.diagnostics.stopwatch. So I'm casting here by placing it in front, dts.variables stopwatch dot value. And now I stop it. 
and now report back how long it took. Elapsed milliseconds. That's really uh, pretty simple, right? I mean, it's not hard to add in a timer. It's all about knowing about the stopwatch class, and the stopwatch class will just give us these elapsed milliseconds. We can see how many hours it returned, whatever you need to do. Generally, I'm using milliseconds because the tasks are probably, you know, in minutes, five minutes, and I want to know partial minutes. I don't want to know that it just took five minutes. I want to know that it was, um, you know, down to the number of seconds that it took. So let's go ahead and run this. And it should again say 1,000 or 999 or something, 1,047. That 47 or 48 milliseconds is the amount of time that it probably took to call for SSIS, the overhead to call the other uh, package, uh, the other task, and then to instantiate and get that reference from memory. So it's not a true test exactly down to the millisecond of how long it actually took to perform this task. There's going to be some minor overhead, but it's probably pretty repeatable. We're probably talking about 30 milliseconds, 50 milliseconds max for this overhead down here. It was 40-something, then 30, then 37. So it's very simple to add a stopwatch to that. I'm going to put this in the C-sharp uh, section up here. So let's just call this the C-sharp group. And I'm going to create another group that does this in VB. And I will include this file in the video. And then you could just basically copy and paste between your applications, regardless of which one that you need. So stick with me if you want to learn the VB version. Uh, I'm just going to quickly walk through it. Uh, but if you think you got it, we're done. OK, so you're here with me for VB, right? So let's do this. We'll just start over here. We're going to just say, uh, just put this over here. Let's go grab our VB. And we need to write to our variable, the stopwatch class. And it's the same. Okay, so we just say dim stopwatch as new. I did it again in my silly C sharp. I'm used to SSIS 2005, I guess, defaulting to VB. And so BB. So we want to write to the stopwatch class. Come down here, dim stopwatch as new system. And you know, you could actually put this in your using or your imports directive, the system diagnostics namespace. But since I'm only using it once, I'm not gonna do it. And dts.variables stopwatch dot value. <laughs> okay. You've started your stopwatch. Let's do the same thing over here with do our stuff in VB. Start timer VV and golly, C sharp bit me again. Start timer VV um, and uh, oh, I already had that one. Um, do stuff VB. I promise you, you will do that. <laughs> You just get going. You'll be mentally trying to get out what's in your brain, and you will just do that a hundred times. So I'm just going to make the thread go to sleep. And now let's report it. And I can bring in a read-only copy. I remembered this time of the stopwatch class uh, variable here. And the trick now is just figuring out, doing your casting in VB. That's all you have to do. So come down here, 
change your code. All right, so uh, let's just say we'll grab our stopwatch. And what you got to figure out is what type of cast that you need to do. So we have the choice. We can do a direct cast or we can use C type. I'm going to choose, I'll do both, okay, and I'll show you there's not much difference. Uh, so we'll do a direct cast. Let's grab our variable. And we want to convert it, <coughs> excuse me, to stopwatch. And this is probably one of those times where I will import the system.diagnostics namespace just to make it less code on one line. So I'm going to come back up here and bring the diagnostics namespace into the using uh, into the imports directive. And now I can move it out here and just say stopwatch. And now I can just stop it. And we can do our reporting uh, on the elapsed milliseconds. So uh, that'll be the direct cast. The other option right here, just so that you have it, would be to use a C type. It's the exact same syntax. In fact, I could just copy and paste right here. Uh, it's just a different technique. I would prefer a direct cast in this case because I know that this variable is of this type. I know it. I just set it. If I was unsure, if there was probably, if I wasn't guaranteed what the types were, I probably would use C type. Um, I'm cool here with either one. It's not going to make any difference. So what I'll do now is I'm not going to do a group. I want to grab a sequence container. Um, you can't right click on a group and execute or disable the group, but I can do that with a sequence container. See, I can disable the whole thing or I can execute it. Um, and so you can see here 1058, about the same as C sharp here uh, for it to execute, maybe a few milliseconds uh, slower. Uh, so 1058, if I go back into my code and I make this a direct cast down here, so we comment that out, uh, it's probably going to be still 1058, maybe 1057, maybe 1059. <laughs> I mean, it's, it is not really any major difference between the two. Okay, so given that we're dealing with a few milliseconds here, I wouldn't worry about the differences.